talking about home. So today we're working on kitchens. So, and not, we're not gonna paint the kitchen today, but we're gonna work on um, some decor. So I've got a little rolling pin here that I found. Apparently these are like high commodity. It was really hard to find rolling pins. Go figure. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and show you how to make this cute little decor. You can just prop it in your um, kitchen and have a cute little piece that matches your kitchen decor. So we're gonna go ahead and get this ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and scan on down to the rolling pin itself so you can see us working on this today. So here we go, bye y'all, come on see my rolling pin. All right, so make sure you sprinkle the video. Real important, I can't say the words because Facebook doesn't like the other word. And uh, make sure you like us and make sure you like uh, Paint Couture as well. And uh, today we are playing with Angelic. Angelic is a nice creamy color right here. I want to go a little neutral. Let's see if we can get this guy open. Yes. All right. And we are using our blue ice brushes today. I like them. They're nice and thin. So they work really well. Um, also, let's go ahead and prep these edges really quick. And I am using some stir sticks bound together. So that way my rolling pin um, will sit on that for me. We're going to take a little bit of blue tape and we're just going to and you can get rolling pins at, um, we got these at TJ Maxx. You can get them probably at Walmart. You can go thrifting and get those. Um, if you thrift them, make sure you clean them really well because that if they were used to roll out cookie dough, which is my favorite, or pie dough, um, it's going to have a seasoned wood meaning it's got oils in the wood so you definitely want to degrease that um, so you want to make sure your paint's going to stick um, to your project you don't want to do all this work and have it not stick all right now these are not usable once you've painted them they are for decor only so you'll see but no you do not paint don't paint them if you want to use them for rolling out dough we have one at home that's marble and it works wonderful. It's nice and heavy. All right, so now we've got our taped edges. All right. Okay, stay right there. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and dab a little bit of our paint. Um, why I like the blue ice brushes is that they're thinner. So what we're gonna do is just get just this edge real fast. Okay, and if you guys have questions, make sure you drop them in the comments. All right, so I'm putting on, this is one coat. One coat is excellent coverage. I am a two coat girl. That's how I've been trained. Um, I, some of you know, but I started out with Sherwin-Williams paint um, right out of college and learned how to faux finish and all that good stuff, um, but learned every part of painting um, even more than I already had. Uh, already knew. All right, so let's get this guy going. So you want nice, um, what I like about the blue ice brushes is that you don't have a thick brush where all your paint is wasted. So this is acrylic, so you don't need a big chalk paintbrush. Those are usually thicker. So you don't need that. Usually I have more trouble with the chalk paint brushes because it gets too much paint on my surface and can cause me to have a few paint drags. Okay. All right, see how easy that is? Alrighty, so now we're gonna go ahead and get this little edge right here. Okay, and if you guys have questions, make sure you pop them down in the comments as well. And let's see, and you could do this with lots of things. I've seen um, the big wooden spoons painted up and decorated. That's always kind of fun. All right, so we got that one nicely painted. And we're gonna do a second coat on this. We're not gonna make you watch paint dry. I mean, you know, come on. I know you like to get to the good juicy stuff. So once we have our second coat and it's nice and dry, we would go on to our next step. So power of live today. We're gonna go ahead and put this over and let it dry. And then we're going to pick out a, we're gonna get our already finished one. 
Voila! Alrighty, so I've got one finished. I've got another one too. I might pop it out. We'll see. We'll see a time. It's been a crazy day or crazy week. It's actually the longest week for me, it feels like. Um, but let's get this going. I'm just going to take off this. We don't need the tape anymore. And we, these were pretty nice handles. We didn't want to paint them, but if you found like a, um, one of those old vintage ones, it'd be cool to kind of paint the handles red or what have you. And you could certainly uh, paint these. These are kind of a, um, I don't know if they're ceramic or plasticky. I don't, I'm not sure. They're really cool though. And they're a little black and white. So I kind of like that. All right. So we've painted our two coats of angelic angelic right there and that's the color so all right so now what we're gonna do we've got our piece two coats beautiful coverage uh, no brush strokes you guys the paint levels out perfectly which I can't say that for all paint brands um, everybody's got a little different differentness on their paints and this one is actually really good where it levels out really well all right, because um, I've even done the test where I've taken a chip brush and painted a piece of furniture. So if you can do that and have no brush strokes, you've got it made. All right, so I'm going to put a transfer on this piece. And we are using the Burgundy Rose Transfer. And if you caught me on Prima last week, or actually Tuesday, again, I told you this was a long week for me. Um, if you caught me on Tuesday, we were using the Burgundy Rose Garden Transfer. That's this guy right here. So we've done several projects with it. We're doing another one today. And this one's a little big for it, and I'm okay with that because it's going to overlap. But I like that this is going to have this uh, starting here at the edge. So we're going to start that right there. So you see this kind of cut off right there? We're, that's where we're going to start this edge, and we're going to have it go all the way across. All right. And you guys, I just finished painting this, oh, not even an hour ago. So. As long as your paint is nice and dry, which ours is, you can go ahead and put your transfer on. You don't have to wait 24 hours, at least not with Paint Couture. It works really well, um, and you don't need to um, wait for anything. I'm just trying to see what's the best way to keep this steady. So we're going to kind of put that here. All righty, you guys. Okay, so we're going to get this. Now, this is going to be a trickier one. Okay, we're going to line that. Actually, I'll just start right there. Okay. Okay, we got that nice and lined up. You can use your free stick that comes with the transfer, or you can be like me and have your bougie tool. I like my tool um, because it makes it everything a little bit easier. So it's a little bit different um, going on a curvy surface. This one's just curved around. So on Tuesday, I did one of the lamp and it was curvy around and um, the other direction. So it was a lot of, I wanna make sure, I wanna make sure I don't stick this onto the, what I'm working on here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get it this way. And this kind of be one of those, you gotta hold it the best way you can. Um, Cause this is a rowdy little guy right here. He might get a little crazy on you. All right, so I'm gonna keep on, rub this transfer all the way. Okay, we're gonna stop about right there because we need to start lifting that other side off so we can overlap that. Okay. Now I can put it down. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. And this can be tricky. And you can certainly do the transfer on a raw wood surface. I do suggest sealing it. Um, so that way your uh, transfer, I, I've done it on raw wood to give you an example. I've done it on raw wood and it wasn't sealed. I did seal over it. Um, but what happened is that the, I guess, moisture and everything can get underneath then. So I feel like you have to kind of give it a good seal. If that makes sense. At least that's been in my experience. So I would suggest sealing any raw wood before you venture into trying to put a transfer on it because you want your transfer to stick and like I said once you've got this on and you've painted it and all that good stuff you're not going to use it for dough you're not going to use it for 
uh, for anything. It'll be totally home decor. Um, so keep that in mind. Don't, don't use it. You'll be really sad. You'll ruin your piece more than anything else. Because I'm pretty sure the Crisco and everything and butter that you put in your cookies and your dough will ruin, will ruin it. I am a dough aficionado. If you didn't know, I love dough. So when they came out with cookie dough ice cream, I was in heaven. I don't know how many of you are like that, but I rather have the dough than the cookie any day. All right, Oop. key is always make sure your transfer sticking everywhere. I'm just gonna rub all over this guy. Okay, there we go. So this is a little bit easier because you are going, you have the curve in one direction versus having hit in multiple directions. So um, still produces its own challenges, so just if you're steady with it. It is a uh, unruly kind of surface because it wants to move around on you. You just go slow on the piece. And you could use the decor stamps. Those would be fun on this. I was even thinking if you put a decor stamp down and rolled the pin right on it, that would be kind of neat. Um, that would probably work. Let's see, we're getting there. Now we're coming about, uh, back around. You'll start seeing the other side. I can even see those little the decor stamps that have the letters. I think it's called Alpha would be fun. It'd be fun like a little Valentine um, idea too, like Be Mine and Kiss the Cook, all those kind of cute things. So this would be kind of a fun project for the family to enjoy as well. Okay. Let's get that guy all the way. All right, almost done. I see the finish line, y'all. All right, and you wanna choose flowers or lettering that's a little smaller. Of course, you don't wanna use the biggest um, flower in the bunch. That wouldn't work as well. Okay, let's see. I like to make sure that we don't rip this guy. Alrighty, there we go. So now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna set this back up here. All right, so now I'm gonna take a cloth and I'm just gonna burnish my edges down and just get all those air bubbles out. I'm just gonna, ooh, ooh, I almost had a little tragic accident there. I don't know if you guys saw that. Okay, don't do like me. Do the inside out, okay? <laughs> All right, inside out, and then I guess you can kind of get rough with it. All right, so, so there's where we kind of overlap right there, so it's perfect. All right, so inside out. I can hear the little bubbles getting pushed out. So let's see, I see a little bubble there. Okay, we get that pretty flower. This is really pretty. I love the muted colors. Gorgeous. Alrighty. Okay, we're back at our beginning. Make sure we got all those. And this is where we had our edge. You wanna make sure we don't have any edges. Now this, you don't necessarily have to seal. You're not gonna be using it, um, but you could seal it. I suggest sealing it with the flat top coat from Paint Couture. It's a nice matte finish. It's not flat, flat, like dead flat. Dead flat is going to be your flattest. Now that will not show your imperfections. So if you have an imperfect surface, um, definitely use the dead flat. Uh, for this project though, I would use the flat. I think it'd be a great, it's one of my favorite go-to top coats anyway. All right. All right, there you go. Okay, you guys. So this is ready to go. You can put it in your, like, move you guys up here real quick so this is ready to go it's ready to be put in like a little canister um, how cute is this how fun is that let me see if I can get 
no glare because it's got a lot of glare happening here. I think it's because I'm wearing a dark shirt. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see if we put it down here. Do we have glare? All right, perfect. All right, so you guys see that? So lots of fun. You can create that. Now you can get creative. You don't have to go totally, you don't have to go totally like traditional there with the uh, creams. Um, Angelic is beautiful, um, but you can go kind of retro and go right here. So this right here, I don't want to forget right here is Moxie by the Sea. Beautiful color. So isn't that gorgeous? So this would be a lot of fun to do um, crazy colors with as well. Um, so I'm also going to show you real quick here. All right, let me get all my, my workspace cleaned up. All right, now I've got another project for you. It's real quick. I'm just going to show you the start of it. So I went to Michael's and bought, I think this was Michael's, maybe Hobby Lobby, I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, I bought myself some cutting boards. Now, of course, you're not going to use these. I wouldn't. I don't know. They look like decor, so I don't know if I'd actually use these on my own um, projects. I mean, on you know, making my own food. I wouldn't cut cheese on it or anything like that. But I certainly would use it for a cute little decor project. So, real quick, let me show you how we're going to prep this surface. So again, this is raw wood. Okay. And I'm going to pick out my side I like best. I think we're going to go with this side. It has a little character to it. Okay, we're going to flip the screen back down again. All right, so there you go. All right, so I'm going to flip this so you guys can see it. What we're going to do now is I'm going to take one of my blue eyes. This is the 40. I've got the 50s and the 30s. Um, but those are nice and handy. They're perfect for blending also. So I'm going to show you how to prep your, your raw wood. All right, so here's my flat. Like I said, it's my favorite. And you know what? We'll go ahead and seal our um, rolling pin too while we're at it. So we'll get like a two for one kind of deal. All right, so let me get my, my handy dandy tray. All right. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead. Well, we want to make sure we stir it. Now I have stirred this already today. But you always want to stir your top coats. I generally not a shaker. Um, that's just training. Uh, I don't like to shake my top coats because it'll leave air bubbles in it, and I tend to get what they call orange peel. So I tend to just stir. I've never had good luck when I shake up my my top coats. Now I have clients that tell me I shake my top coat and they were totally fine. Uh, me, no, doesn't ever work out for me. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's maybe it's the altitude. I don't know. <laughs> I kid. All right, so I'm gonna get a little bit. Um, and another thing, I like to use these skinny, skinny, skinny brushes. See how skinny this guy is, right? Fat here, but skinny there, so you're not gonna get too much product on your piece. All right, so let's go ahead and get this guy. So this is again flat top coat. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start here at the end and go all the way up. So we're just gonna give it a nice, good seal to your piece. All right, so you want to get that nice and pretty. I love the flat. If you guys haven't used flat yet, you got to try it. It's it to me it's more of an eggshell type finish. It's not as shiny as satin, but it's not flat like dead flat. So I call it I secretly call it eggshell. All right. So it's still a good cleanable finish, especially over painted surfaces. And especially if you do a glaze, glaze will build up a little bit of a sheen also. So um, if you have a glaze on your piece and you do satin, it's gonna build up your sheen a little bit shinier than um, if you were to just use it over paint. So just FYI on that. Okay, I'm gonna make sure my edges are nice and cleaned out there. All right, so what I'm gonna do with that, I'm gonna move this over. Okay, make sure I had all my seal, my sealed all my wood. 
So that's what you're gonna do if you want to, we're gonna turn the fan on that guy. If you wanna seal your piece to do a transfer on it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and seal this guy. And it's really important to make sure you don't have any air bubbles in your um, transfer. If you do, what can happen, if you have an air bubble that's under there and you're putting the top coat on, what happens when the top coat dries, it pulls apart and your, your transfer rips. That's what happens. You know what though, guys, if it happens, just roll with it, either put another transfer over that, like just get a flower and stick on there, or you can always totally um, just do an aged antiquing finish on it, right? So always go with the flow. Never think my whole project is trashed. You don't want to trash out your whole project because of one part of your transfer messed up. Because you did a lot of work prepping that piece. You don't want to throw all that work away. Just always embrace it and work with it. You can have a good cry about it. Trust me, I know. You can have a good cry about it, but then just embrace it. Go a different direction. A lot of times when I'm painting, the, the furniture kind of dictates the direction I'm going to go. So... I'm not the best when it comes, I don't do commissions very often because of that. Because I want to, sometimes the furniture says I, I want to be bright green and not traditional white or gray. So I try to paint a piece gray and then white. It just didn't come out. It ended up being green. So, you know, all right. So you guys, look how easy that is. Boom, boom, you're done. You're done with that. All right, so I'm going to put the lid on this. We're going to get this out of the way because we don't want any tragic accidents. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this away as well. But isn't that so cool? I love this. Next, we're going to go ahead and grab that other piece. We're not quite dry, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and fast forward it to dry just a hair. Let's certainly paint that. You can stencil it or what have you. Um, on this particular one, I just want to do... Um, quick easy transfer so this is overflowing love it's one that I use quite often I've used it on it was my first transfer ever to use um, way back when so we've used it we had two pieces of furniture with it and a couple of lazy Susans we've done with it so you get a lot of bang for your buck with the transfers I love the ones you can cut apart because that makes it more fun all right. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and turn the side. I'm not gonna really see that lettering that well. All right, so we're gonna go with, mm -mm -mm. trying to think of what I wanna do with that one. I know what we're gonna do. All right, we're gonna combine two. So I've already done this earlier today. But let's see. I found this transfer. We have quite a few of them left. It's called Delicious Menu. All right, so it's got, so you can see, it's got lots of little words for the kitchen. So we're gonna use one of these for our piece here. So I think, let me see. This is always the part that's the hardest for me sometimes, so just picking out which one I want to use. All right, we're going to do that one. We're going to use espresso, dark and medium roast. It's a good kitchen words, right? So we're going to use that one and get this out of our way. We don't want to make a mess. And definitely don't let your transfers roll up on each other because like this one wants to roll and come off and sometimes that will roll and take off your transfer and you'll just be a little disappointed because you're kind of ruining that transfer if it sticks to itself. So you don't want that to happen. Now this is an older transfer, so it was a little bit, took a little bit of elbow grease to get this one to go on today for me. So sometimes you have them that are a little bit older. It doesn't mean they aren't gonna work. It just means you gotta give them a little bit more love. A little bit more love to it. So we're gonna take it off our little, if you guys haven't found these yet for your small projects, you gotta go get them. I love a Lazy Susan. All right, 
All right, so we're gonna put this guy right down here. I think I want him. <laughs> we are gonna be, we're going ahead and go right in the middle. I was kind of deciding if I wanted to put, and I think we'll go up a little bit like that. So we're gonna go ahead and peel our backing off. All right, and we're just gonna line her up. And I have, let's see, I'm lining that up, make sure we're, we're good. Okay. And this one already has a little distress lettering. So if you mess up on this, not a big deal. Really not a big deal at all. So if it tears on you or what have you, no worries. It'll look like it was meant to be. And again, once you have this done on this piece, no, you're not gonna use it for um, food. It's not food safe. Um, plus you ruin it, put some cheese on there. Cheese has oils and it'll ruin your transfer and all that pretty work you did. So this is strictly one I would hang it on the kitchen wall or set it on the back splash. Just kind of have it cutesy in there. All right, so now this is the fun part. This one, oh, now we go. All right, very nice, so very nice. Oopsie, that one didn't wanna come up, so just give it a little bit of more babying. And sometimes, if you see this, let's see. You see how there's a hazy look to it, and this is darker? This is already off, that's not. So sometimes I will push it and try to work that where it comes off that backing paper, and it kind of helpful to see where what's sticking and what's not. So you can kind of work that. Okay, we need to baby that one off a little bit. Get it off of there. Okay. All right. Ooh, ooh. There we go. Now that guy kind of got wayward on me, but that's all right. That happens. And if there's ever like a boo-boo, like I said, just make it look intentional. I don't think anybody's going to come judging your transfer skills. They'll be amazed that you created this project. They'll be like, wow, you did that? All right, let's keep on a going here. Oops, see, that one wants to stay. Let's see if I can get that to lift up. Sometimes I go the other direction. There we go. All right, again, if you pick up uh, cutting boards that have been used already, if you thrift them or you're, you're recycling your own cutting board, remember there's been a lot of oils and um, stuff on the bottom. Clean it really well, degrease it, definitely seal it. I'd probably tell you to seal at least two coats um, before you put your transfer on it. So you don't want that nasty nastiness to come through oils will remain in there so you know pretty unless you get a pretty good washing out and if you try to bleach it, it's going to only open up the pores and kind of make your board a little dried out so I would not recommend that I would just like Dawn soap and hot water just wood absorbs stuff a little bit different And like I said, they are cheap enough at the hobby store. I'm sure you can get them at a dollar store too. Um, and just make some fun little decor items. Okay, a little eye I didn't want to stay. Okay, there we go. And like I said, you can use your little stick that comes with it. I like this guy. All right, the M does not want to come off. There we go. Ta-da! And sometimes, sometimes I think the weather has something to do with some of this sometimes. I know I had one transfer and I used it one day and it was giving me 
bits, but went the next day and it was totally fine. Alrighty. Looky there, we're almost home free. Woohoo! Alright. Okay, so now we have that on there. Let's go ahead and take our little cloth here. And be careful when you're rubbing on this one. I tried to rub my letters right off while I go. So go with your letter. These little ones can be kind of a extra special. So you gotta make sure that those all get pushed down. Do your lettering. Do your all of those all around, kind of the inside out. Okay. There we go. This guy. Alrighty. Okay. And this one has some kind of um, distressing already in it. So if you wanted to make this a little more distressed, go for it. Knock yourself out. If you messed up and one of them comes off, distress the whole thing. It's never a big deal. Okay. All right, so now we got that on there. And now I wanna add a little pretty to it because I don't want it to be just plain old espresso, right? So I'm gonna add a little bit of a flower to it. So let me see, what do I have that I wanna play with? Let's see, we'll do these guys. We'll do, and so you guys can see this is a newer transfer. It's got the grid lines. So it's also gonna be more opaque. And I'm gonna do these little bitty guys right here. I don't want anything too big, because I got big letters. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut these little flowers right out of here. This is kind of one of my favorite transfers. I love the Paris and the hotel and the French writing. I like everything French. French, French. Okay, so got out little bitty, little bits of flowers there. All right. Actually, I'm gonna lay this out so it doesn't roll up on itself. All right, so let's position our flowers and that way we can get them on there. All righty. So let's see, I want this guy to be kind of up here. I think we're gonna have a little one down here maybe one there so let's get these off the backings off makes it easier for me to kind of envision envision that all right so we're gonna go let's see if I want him there or do I want him kind of hanging off mmm that's a tough one y'all all right so I think actually I'm gonna go hard way. I'm gonna put him over here on the edge and he's gonna come off that edge. Ooh. Don't get carried away, all right? Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and see how we're doing on that. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and lift, lift that up, there we go. Sometimes that little halo is what's really sticking on your piece. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and work that down like that. Okay, there we go. There's one little cute little flower popping out on the side right there. Alrighty, so now we're gonna go ahead and get this gal on there, maybe her little friend. I think I, need, I see another friend over there. We might have to pop her in here too. All right. All right, we're gonna have that one there, but I kinda want, let's see how we want this. Do we want her that way or that way? I think we're gonna do her like this. So I'm gonna pop that one on first because we wanna overlap just a tad bit on this little one. I swear y'all, I hold my breath every time I put these on. 
I don't know if all of y'all do that too. It's just a habit. All right. Okay, and then this guy is going to be nice, big, and fat on top of that one. So we still want to be able to see that this says espresso. We just want a little bit of flowers. We don't need a whole bunch. Well, maybe. You know what? I think I will. I think I will. All right, so we've got, I hear those little bubbles popping out. All right, yeah, we got a little bit of time. So real quick, I'm gonna put you a cute little flower up here and we'll call her done. We'll call her done. Let's see. I like this little, I like that double there. Trying to decide which one I like better. So hard to decide, y'all. I think I like this one kind of going down. Mm -mm -mm. See the agony we go through? We never know. Totally, 100%. Mm, I think I'm going to go really big. Yep, I'm going to go really big. Go big or go home, right? So we're going to go really big on our cutting board. So let's get this guy pulled off. Boom. All right, so we're gonna get that on there. I like that right about, let me see, do I wanna do it kind of funky? Nope. I want it to be lined up. All right, we're gonna do it there. We're gonna have a little bit of it coming off there, not a big deal, kinda like it. You can get a pretty old um, bow on this, or you can put some raffia on it. I'd probably just leave it just like it is. I might change my loop out for a leather loop. Or leave my little rustic twine on there. So remember, raw wood, you do need to seal it. So we sealed it with the paint couture flat. So see how those are coming up a little bit? Not a big deal. Put them right back down and just burnish them over, okay? And burnish just means rub it, rub it, rub it out. All right. Okay, let's see. All righty, there we go. Oh, see that one's trying to tear on me. So once you get past that halo area, it seems to be much easier, but you got to get past that halo. And to me, it's usually easier on my painted surface. But like I said, sometimes that doesn't even matter. Okay, get on there. Do that. Get her going. And just go kind of slow. You don't want to go, see, look, see that little tear right there? Don't you worry. Put that back down. Rub that on. Rub it on until it stays. There we go. And these are all new little halo spots. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. This little halo right there wants to stick on me. There we go. Sometimes when I'm holding this and I can pull it, it does work a little bit better. It's kind of that pressure and it pulling out just kind of works. Not every time, but sometimes. All right, so here we're getting to the edge. I'm just gonna roll that right off. All right, we're gonna put this to the side. 
All right, I love my flowers. And there's so many cool ones coming out, you guys. I believe February 5th. So be on the lookout for new transfers. They'll pair perfect with Paint Couture. You hear those bubbles? I hope you, I wish you could hear these bubbles coming out. When you're working on your transfer and once you've got it on, you still gotta go back and work all those bubbles out. And you'll hear them. They'll make those little like, almost like a, um, when you're popping bubble wrap, but not that loud. Just kind of like a little, sh sh and it's kind of satisfying. Cause you know that you're getting all those air bubbles out. Okay, make sure these guys are out. That one too. All right, you guys, so let me lift this back up for you so you can see me. Hello, y'all. All right, so, boom, let me get, not that high, there we go. So we got your cute little cutting board. Again, you're not gonna use this for cutting on anymore. This is just strictly for decor. Just hang it in your kitchen, prop it on your backsplash, either way you go. Um, lots of fun for your kitchen so you can decorate that any way you want. Let's get that where it's not so bright light. You can see that. So we just combined a couple of transfers. Again, we sealed that. And then this one was so pretty. I love this. This is angelic. Let's see. I think it's my shirt. Anyway, so angelic. I'm going to get up real close to you guys. Angelic in that burgundy rose garden. It's just real pretty. So boom, you're done. Instant um, decor for your kitchen. Um, again, don't use it for rolling out dough. You'll be kind of sad. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. And happy painting. See you next time.